Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Bald Metal Nerd coming at you with another um, video. And uh, you already know what this is going to be <clears throat> due to the title. So I'll just go ahead and uh, give a bit of context. Uh, if you've watched any number of my videos, any large number, I, I mention this a lot uh, in a lot of my videos, I am... Uh, a huge Star Trek fan. Uh, just to give you some context uh, as far as my personal background with Star Trek, um, I started watching uh, the show when I was about six or seven years old. Uh, back then I watched uh, reruns of the original series. Um, and I got enjoyment out of it. Now granted I was a little kid so it was you know, a bit here and there, but I, I definitely liked it. And I remember uh, by the time The Next Generation premiered uh, in 87, I was um, nine years old, so I had been watching uh, the original series for a couple of years by that point. And by that point, I was pretty familiar with the original series. I, hell, by then I had probably seen every episode probably once by the time The Next Generation premiered. And then um, I remember watching The Next Generation when it was actually on television uh, from 87 to 94. And of course, I saw the subsequent uh, movies when they were uh, in theaters. I think the first one I saw in theaters was uh, Star Trek IV, which was of course, the one with the whales, and um, I just saw them all in the theater after that up until the 2009 reboot. Um, so, and to give you more context into, <coughs> excuse me, uh, my personal position on Star Trek, I'm going to give you my personal list of Star Trek series. I'm going to go from my favorite to least favorite in descending order. My favorite is Next Generation. My second favorite is the original series. Third is Deep Space Nine. Fourth is Voyager. And bottom is Enterprise. So that just gives you my sensibilities to know how much um, what I'm going to say about this subject would lie. If, if you're kind of in a similar place as a Star Trek fan. It might give you some context uh, to know how similar we may uh, see this. So anyway, um, if you're watching this, you are probably uh, have watched The Orville. Um, my opinion of it so far is I am quite enjoying the show. Um... It's quite obviously a uh, Seth MacFarlane's love letter to Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, if you've been reading the story, you know, reading up on it, you know a lot of the people who were um, involved with Star Trek The Next Generation are involved with the Orville as well. Jonathan Frakes, for example, just, you know, directed the most recent episode. Uh, I know Patrick Stewart's going to appear on the show and a few other actors, um, we got, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Cassidy Yates on the show as the doctor, so well, I know that's not the actress's name, but, you know, um, so there's tons and tons of connections for the Orville to kind of the 90s era of Star Trek, the, the, the golden age of it, if you will, right, um, so there you go, um, now, do I think the Orville is better than any of the classic Star Trek shows? It's still early days, but I would say at this point, no. It's not better than, you know, uh, Star Trek shows of that era. But it is uh, extremely entertaining, uh, and it is fairly well written and in a lot of ways it does keep the spirit of Star Trek uh, it, it adheres to it really well and to me 
what Star Trek generally is about is a group of people on a starship, a crew, that's in a hopeful future where humanity has its shit together, basically out in space exploring and doing great things, right? Week to week. And the Oroville does accomplish this, um, you know. And the Oroville also has a lot of really good characters. Um, Isaac's probably my favorite. I also really like Bordas and, and uh, his partner Clyde, and they're amusing to me. Um, the captain, Seth MacFarlane's character, M Mercer, he's okay. Um, you know, the Salayan, uh, you know, she's really cool. I can't remember her name, but of course the strong girl that was his caller, the strong hot girl. She's really cool. Uh, I like the doctor character. So they have a lot of really good ensemble cast going on in the Orville. It's a really good show, really in the spirit of Star Trek, but it does feel kind of like, for lack of a better term, a knockoff. But I don't mean that in a bad way, because it really is a love letter to the show. And I think it's really well executed. Now, we're going to contrast that, of course, with Discovery, which is kind of the whole reason I'm talking about this. Um, I just finished watching uh, Discovery, the at least the three episodes that have aired so far. And no, I did not pay for all access. Since 2017, we have ways of seeing things, right? We'll just say that. Anyway, um, my opinion of Discovery. The um, the first, the, the basically the pro, prologue, um, as it were, terrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I really didn't enjoy it at all. Um, the main character, Michael Burnham, stupid ass female name but regardless I, I got past that pretty quick the name of the character she is not well written very annoying and a really poor choice for a protagonist just not well done um, in fact the only character I liked in the um, the prologue period was Saru. Um, spoil alert. Almost all, basically all the characters that you learn their names or hear anything about, they all die except for Burnham and Saru. Luckily, Saru survives. Right? Um, but other than that, none of the other characters really may make any sort of impression on you at all because... They really want this to be Michael Burnham's story. Um, that's what the whole focus is on that one character. Problem is, she is a shit character. A shit character. But that, whatever. Um, you know, at least in the in those two episodes, she's terrible. She doesn't do anything that makes you like her. She's extremely badly written. I don't really blame the actress. Well, semi-blame the actress, but I think it's just poor writing uh, mostly with that character in, uh, <clears throat> the, you know, that the prologue. So, ba pro prologue, prologue. So, basically, that ends, um, you know, and they don't even show the discovery in those first two episodes. Um, they're on a ship called the Shenzo, gets destroyed by the Klingons, there's a big war, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go over the plot details, I'm just kind of talking about the overall feel of the show. And then, episode three takes place, it takes six months after the events of the first two episodes. Um, and it got better, um, the show, actually. Uh, at that point... I liked most of the new characters they introduced. The only one I didn't like is somehow the only character they managed to make more annoying than Michael Burnham, and that is the uh, cadet Sully, or I'm sorry, Tolly, whatever her name is, the redhead kind of annoy, really annoying character. Um, the and of course it's Michael Burnham's 
roommate on the ship. Um, the rest of the characters uh, I enjoyed that they introduced. I liked the new captain. Um, obviously, he's got some sinister type of agenda, but overall, he's a relatively good character. Um, and I liked, you know, the 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 commander, the female uh, security chief. She was enjoyable. Um, the guy in the engineering lab, he was kind of a jerk, but he at least had some depth to him. And they did write Michael Burnham's character better in that episode than they did in the first two. They improved her some, but she's still kind of crappy. Um, and I find her acting, even though the, the actress did a pretty good job on The Walking Dead, um, she, in my opinion, doesn't play her role particularly well on the show. Her acting is a bit wooden and pedest too pedestrian for me. You know, of course, she was raised by Vulcan, so she's got the whole cup between two worlds thing. She doesn't do a good job of it, in my opinion. Uh, it's kind of piss poor. She's certainly no Leonard Nimoy, right? Not even close. So, yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, <clears throat> she's not even Zachary Quinto, all right? <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, I'm not a fan of it, a uh, big, big fan. Um, so where would I rate Discovery? Um, well, I would rate it so far, and again, it's still early days. I would rate it below Enterprise, but probably above the Star Trek reboot movies. I really don't like the Star Trek reboot movies. And this feels kind of similar to them. And uh, I think the only reason I rate it above the reboot movies is because at least it's, they're not trying to redo the old characters. Or it's not Kirk and Spock and all of them. But of course, for some fucking reason, they had to incorporate Sarek into it, who's not Mark Leonard. So, on that, but you know, Whatever, it's that's a whole other discussion about reboots and all that. I'm I'm not a fan of those generally. Um, so now I'm going to talk, of course, about some of the elephants in the room uh, regarding discovery. Um, <clears throat> one of the big ones, of course, is the redesign of the Klingons. Um, now, actually, having watched it and seen it, I hate it. <laughs> I mean, I kind of figured I would uh, just when I saw the pictures and stuff, but they really look terrible with the redesign. Um, plus, with the prosthetics, they all have mush mouth. It looks like they all talk like this, but it's a Klingon. It's just terrible. Uh, I don't know what the hell they were thinking with that. Uh, also, um, th there is this whole thing about um, at least the way this was portrayed in the media, and to be fair, it was a lot of the actors and writers and all this promoting it as this big SJW thing, right? Of course, like, um, and then you would hear things like, I, I'm sure as more bad reviews roll in, it'll really be determined. Maybe if more bad reviews roll in, people will probably be like, oh, well, it's because people are racist or misogynist that they don't like the show because the main character is a black woman. That's ridiculous. Um, you know, she's just a terrible character. In fact, she is the second worst character on the show, and she's the lead. Not good, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, I understand that they're trying to do something different with the show, give her an extensive backstory, but when she's such an unlikable character, it doesn't do well. In my opinion, the absolute gold standard for a character's backstory, uh, you know, introduction in Star Trek is Benjamin Sisko. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the first episode of Deep Space Nine, you know, where they showed... Uh, how he was in the Battle of Wolf 359, lost his wife, had all his animosity towards Picard. Fucking great. That was awesome. 
I love that. They did they did a great great job with uh, Cisco. And um, of course the whole thing now that they're doing is they are um, you know, one thing I do like about Discovery, I'll, I'll say a positive about it, is they are trying to explore the dichotomy, they're talking about it at least, the dichotomy in Starfleet between being scientists and explorers versus being soldiers and warriors. They are exploring it, um, but I don't think they're doing it quite as well as Deep Space Nine did. I think Deep Space Nine did a great job with it. I think the reason Deep Space Nine did it so well is because for the first good while on Deep Space Nine, they were simply the traditional Starfleet explorers, for lack of a better term, diplomats, scientists, whatever. I mean, that was the feel of Deep Space Nine. And then, of course, they had the Dominion War arc. But even during the Dominion War, you had episodes where they would be explorers. So it really never lost touch of that. In Discovery, so far, it's still early days, but it doesn't feel like they're exploring jack shit. Right? There's no exploration going on. There's none of the traditional Star Trek feel, for lack of a better term. It's all just dark, bleak war stuff, which is fine. In Star Trek, that's fine for some episodes, but you don't want that to be the focus of the entire show. So, yeah, whatever. Um, my opinion of the show so far is, meh, it's okay. Uh, it's certainly not a great Star Trek show. Now, <clears throat> back to the Orville. As far as a Star Trek show goes, Orville hits all the right boxes, and I think is generally a pretty good example of what a Star Trek show more or less should be. Now, is it as good as a lot of the Star Trek shows? No. Whereas Discovery is an official Star Trek show, um, but it's, you know, well, official as in owned by Paramount CBS, but it's the whole feel of it is is not good. It's just, especially with the protagonist being so unlikable and them just shifting the style of the show so dramatically from what we're used to. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not loving it so far. Uh, it's okay, but it's, cer it's certainly not worth paying for CBS All Access. And, um, you know, before I watched it, to be fair to the show, before I watched it, with all of the, you know, craps, SJW crap surrounding it, I was worried that it would seep into the show too much. And I did notice a few throwaway lines in it. I won't spoil them for you, just in case you want to watch this thing. Um, there were a few throwaway lines that kind of irked me a bit. It did seem like they were related to kind of an SJW, um, what's the word I'm looking for, worldview. They were fleeting, though. They weren't, it, it, it didn't, it certainly didn't beat you over the head with that, which is good, uh, because that would have been an extremely, uh, then I would just totally be trashing this show. But I did notice maybe about three or four lines that kind of spewed a little bit of that. It was a bit irritating, but I can forgive that. If, if that was the show's only problem, I would be saying much better things about it. Uh, but overall, so far the show is a bit of a letdown. But it does have potential. It could turn into something decent. We'll see over the course of the season. I'm not super hopeful. Um, but we'll see. We will see. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it. Um, I might revisit this in the future, maybe at the end of, you know, the first season for both shows. I might revisit this. Uh, I'll revisit it sooner if my opinion of Discovery, you know, goes up. If I, if I start enjoying the show more, I will advocate it. But as of right now, I just can't say that Discovery is really truly worth your time. The Orville... Definitely is. So anyway, that pretty much wraps it up. I'd really be interested to hear your your thoughts in the comments below. 
Um, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.